D&D number three, Finding Home in Jesus' Name, chapter six. Oops. And it went away. All right. Sorry. My computer messed up. Almost there. All right. Chapter six. Critically, Lisa looked herself over in the mirror that hung on the back of her bedroom door. She didn't really know what to wear to a town social. She'd bought a blue jean skirt and a pair of cowboy boots during her shopping trip Thursday, thinking they'd be perfect for a little country social. Along with the white eyelet lace camisole top, it fit her version of country girl. But now that she saw the result in the mirror, she was having second thoughts after all. It was being held at a church. Was the skirt too tight or maybe too short? Did the blouse show too much cleavage? Did she look like a country girl or a floozy? She simply had no experience in this sort of thing. She knew how to dress to the hilt for a cocktail party, but didn't think a slinky black dress with spiked heels was the thing here. She knew how to dress for success at the office. She knew how to dress for a Laker game a shopping trip down Rodeo Jive, a yacht party, but country church social dinner and dance was out of her realm of experience. So used to being on her own, so used to figuring out how to be perfect without anyone's help, it hadn't occurred to her to ask someone, maybe speak with Grams or even Chaz. No, not Chaz. Squaring herself, she looked again. Her arms and shoulders were bare except for the skinny straps of the camisole. Thanks to the daily workouts that had occupied every morning of her old life, there was a good bit of definition. She could see only a tiny bit of cleavage just above the lacy edge of material and nodded in approval, deciding it wasn't too much. Tugging at the skirt, which may be a tad short, she blew out a breath. Oh well. She didn't have much else to choose from right now, so this was it. Her fingers touched the small bandage at her hairline, and she tugged a few strands of hair down to hide it. There, not too bad. She heard the front door open and Chaz's voice call Maddie. Here goes, she whispered, grabbing her bag and heading downstairs. Maddie had just handed Chaz one of her two peach cobblers to carry to the car when Lisa appeared on the steps. Well, don't you look nice, Maddie said, her eyes gleaming at her granddaughter. Doesn't she, Chaz? He cleared his throat. Nice? Um, yeah, nice. He eyed her as she came down the stairs. His thoughts he kept to himself. Nice? Gorgeous is more like it. Stunning, but nice? Nice? A pretty young blonde standing beside Chaz commented. Why, you look beautiful. The girl approached Lisa. Hey, I'm Cindy, Chaz's sister. I'm so happy to finally meet you. I've heard so much about you. You have? Oh, sure. The whole town is talking about you, but don't you let that worry you. It's just a natural curiosity. You're the hottest news in town. Until the next new thing, she laughed. Lisa smiled, deciding she liked the little chatterbox. Looking up at Chaz, she realized he hadn't taken his eyes from her. She smoothed her hair, noticing at the same time Cindy's modest floral sundress. She grimaced. I think maybe I'm dressed inappropriately. I wasn't sure what to wear. Maybe I should find something to change into. Chaz found his voice. No, don't change a thing. You are definitely going to be the hit of the night. They piled into a black Ford Explorer. Lisa in the back next to, in, next to Cindy, who held one peach cobbler on her knees, and Maddie in front holding the other cobbler. Chaz behind the wheel. They drove the few miles to the church while Cindy chatted steadily. By the time they arrived, Lisa knew Cindy was 
20 years old, studying to be a nurse, even though she was encouraged to go on to get her doctorate by her mother, who was a cardiologist. Cindy also let it slip that since Chaz had dropped out of medical school, their mom had to find someone to follow in her footsteps, but it wouldn't have to be it, but it would have to be her younger sister who was still in high school or her next older brother, who she didn't think would go to medical school since he was a deputy sheriff for Pine County. All she knows is it certainly wasn't going to be her. She could never stay in school that long. She could never do anything for that long except maybe talk. Her father said she never shuts up. When Cindy mentioned Chaz had dropped out of medical school, Lisa looked up at Chaz in the rear view mirror, but a clenched jaw and narrowed eyes warned her off the asking about it. It dawned on Lisa that there was much more to this man than a cowboy who'd been in the military. At the church, Chaz tried to carry Maddie's cobbler into the kitchen for her, but she was having none of it. Lisa will help me, she said. I want to introduce her to some of the ladies, and then I promise to bring her back to you. Chaz had no choice other than to agree. Lisa grinned at him as she followed Maddie into the church, but the moment she walked in, she began to feel self-conscious. Out of the corner of her eye, she could see people pointing and whispering, and thank goodness they were early and there wasn't a great deal of people around yet. In the kitchen, Lisa set the cobbler she'd carried onto the counter. Before she could even look up, the women gathered around. Oh, this must be Lisa, one woman exclaimed. And so the introductions began. She was surrounded by women ranging in age from 80-something down to 20-something. And kind things were uttered. I'm so happy you've come home. You're more beautiful than I ever pictured. Maddie deserves to ha finally have some happiness. I hope you're planning to stay a good long while. Lisa smiled and nodded so much her cheeks began to ache, but really, she didn't mind. Her heart was so full. How could all these people who had never laid eyes on her be so interested, be so kind, care so much? Is this really how the rest of the world treats each other? She thought of the kindness shown her at the truck stop. Dolly and Bill and Hank were like angels to her. She'd called them to let them know the latest, and they'd sound as if they really cared. What's more, they made her promise to keep in touch. Would they do that if they didn't have a real interest? Cindy came bursting into the kitchen, greeted all the ladies, and grabbed Lisa by the arm. Sorry, but I've got to steal our celebrity. She drug Lisa out of the kitchen and into the large gym that had been converted via streamers and balloons into a dance hall. The lights were dimmer than when she'd come through a few minutes earlier. A band was tuning up and the crowd had grown considerably. Cindy leaned close. You can thank me later. Lisa laughed. You're a gem. I'll have to think of something really nice to do for you. Cindy led Lisa back toward the group of friends who'd gathered around Chaz, thinking she'd have to let her brother know he owed her too. Chaz's eyes lit up at the sight of Lisa as she approached, wearing those boots and that tight skirt. She was laughing and glowing. Her hair fell forward across one shoulder, glad and maybe proud that she'd come with him. He took her hand the moment she arrived back at his side. Lisa, do you remember these guys? You were pretty out of it the first time you met. Lisa looked them over. She pointed to the tall, slim one with brown hair and eyes. You're Josh, right? And... You're Troy, she said, pointing to a heavyset man with dimples and long hair. They smiled and nodded. And that means you must be Evan. Evan frowned. I'm always last. Lisa batted her eyes at him. Well, I was saving the best for last. Chaz watched as Lisa easily wrapped his friends around her little finger, getting a glimpse of the corporate vice president. She couldn't have reached that position without having mastered some major people skills. So what do you think about our little town, Evan asked. Lisa's smile was warm and sweet, and Chaz found his pulse quickening. Well, except for the vicious livestock, I find it wonderful. Everyone is so kind. Ha! Huh? Cindy exclaimed. Not hardly. Well, anyone. Well, anyway, so far, Lisa said. No livestock in L.A., huh? Josh asked. Lisa grinned. Well, not the kind you cook. Speaking of livestock, Troy jumped in. Have you ever been horseback riding? No, never. Except for the time Chaz picked you up off the street, Josh joked. Well, I'm sure she doesn't remember that, Chaz asked. She was out cold. Lisa blushed. So why don't you let me take you riding, Troy offered. Really? Sure. He smiled broadly as he caught Chaz's frown. 
I'd love to show you how to ride. At the snickers that followed the comment, Chaz's frown turned into a scowl. His frustration mounted as Lisa accepted the invitation. Well, so much for his theory that his friends would encourage him to have a relationship with her. Then again, he thought, this is Troy, the pervert, and in Troy's mind, anyone's game. Smiling a wicked smile, he added Troy to his list of people whose butt he needed to kick. His main need right now, though, is to touch Lisa. Amazed at how his fingers itched to connect with her, he was just about to ask her to dance when Andrea rushed up, grabbing him by the arm. There you are. I desperately need to talk to you, she tugged on his arm. Not now, Andrea. Lisa watched, intrigued by the pretty young girl with long, dark hair. It's important, really. She pulled his arm as she glanced at the group of people. Raising her chin, she directed a sneer at Lisa. I'm sure your little friend, little friends won't mind, will you? This is terribly important, and I've waited all week to be able to speak to you. Evan glared. I think I'll go find some cleaner air. He left their circle. Giving Chaz's arm a hard jerk, she became a force to be reckoned with. I promise I'll bring you right back. Her voice began to tremble. Please, Chaz, I, I simply must speak with you. Give it a rest, Andrea, Cindy said. Bite me, Andrea answered. Lisa's eyebrows shot up. She recognized the determination in the girl's eyes and knew they would have no peace until he took the time to speak with her. Go, Chaz. I'll be okay until you get back. See there, Andrea said. She tugged one more time before Chaz sighed heavily and left with her. Good. Now that he's out of the way, dance with me, Troy urged. Josh laughed. With friends like you, Troy, buddy, who needs enemies? He touched Lisa's arm. But when you finish with him, I get the next one. Lisa laughed. You got it. New scene. <clears throat> Chaz es escorted Andrea out of the building and around to the side near the fenced-in playground. What are you up to, Andrea? Chaz, she whined. Why do you have to be so mean? He shook his head. You haven't seen mean yet. Now, what is it that's so important? Letting go of his arm, she swung around, pouting, and leaned against the chain-link fence. Did you bring that girl to the dance? Pure frustration had him running his hand through his hair. Who I bring to the dance or anywhere else is none of your concern. Well, of course it is. What are people going to think when you bring someone else to the dance when we're together? We're not together, Andrea. We've never been together. How can you say that after everything? What everything? You pestered me until I finally agreed to take you out. The first time I didn't know any better. The second time, because, well, I guess I'm a glutton for punishment. But that's it, Andrea. We went out twice. And we had sex. He shook his head. What is wrong with you? I never laid a hand on you. She pouted again. Well, maybe not. But I'll tell everyone you did if you break up with me. Andrea, let me see if I can make this clear. There is no you and me. I can't break up with you because we're not together. And I don't care what you tell anyone. However, you might want to consider your own reputation before you go spewing lies. The look on her face made him feel guilty, and he softened his demeanor. Look, Andrea, you're young. I'm 20. I was going to say you're younger than me by eight years. You're the same age as my little sister. We just don't have a lot in common. You need to set your sights on someone else. I can't, Chaz. I want you. Yeah, I've figured that out, but you can't have me, so you need to get used to the idea. Chaz, you don't understand. She took his hand. When he tried to pull it away, she held on. Wait, just listen. There's something I need to tell you. What? I've known since I was 15 years old that you were the one for me. Andrea, just let me finish. Do you remember Cindy's summer party for her 13th birthday? You were getting ready to go into the Marines. You were so handsome in your uniform. Give me a break. Just listen. I was only 12 then, but from that day forward, I knew you were the one. It hurt me knowing Carrie was the one you'd be kissing goodbye. Stop. Two years later, when you married Carrie, I thought I'd just die. Even thought about taking some pills, you know, just making it all go away. But instead, I stayed strong. 
And even when your little girl was born, I still didn't give up. The darkness crept over Chaz. Let me warn you, Andrea, you need to stop right now. No, I can't stop. Well, this may be hard for you to hear, but you have to know. I never gave up the idea that you and I were supposed to be together. And then three years ago, when I was a senior in high school, Chaz's jaw, jaw clenched. And I heard about the accident. His respiration doubled. And I knew, I just knew, you know, I knew that it happened for a reason, that it was meant to. She gasped as Chaz moved forward and slapped his hand over her mouth. Stop it. Just stop. He didn't yell. He spoke with a dead calm, softly and very seriously. You are a sick little girl. Don't you ever, not ever, speak of my wife and little girl again. Don't you ever speak to me again. I want nothing to do with you. He released his hold and stepped away. She stood gasping, her eyes large and filled with tears. But Chaz, I was just trying to make you understand. I understand enough that you could think two people's deaths were for your benefit tells me you need help. Get some counseling. You'll get nothing from me. Stay away from me. Do not speak to me. Do not come near me or my family. Next time, I may not be able to control myself. He stormed away. Chaz looked up to see his younger brother, Tyson, making his way up the walk to the church. Hey, brother, Tyson called. Chaz stopped and nodded. Deputy. Tyson knew immediately all was not well with his brother. What's happened? That little... He stopped himself. Tyson looked past Chaz to see Andrea run inside. Andrea? What's she done now? Chaz turned and started to just walk away, but stopped and came back. He needed to vent. She said, Carrie and Julie, he drew a breath, trying to calm himself, get control of his emotions. She said the accident was meant to be, to clear the way for her and me to be together. Good Lord. Tyson looked away to think of that, of what to say. Chaz, the girl is unbalanced. You can't let her get to you. He nodded. I know, I know. It's just, it's just, well, if it was meant to be, then God is as sick as her. Chaz, we're standing here in front of a church. You need to get a grip. It wasn't meant to be. It was, a, it was an accident. They happen all the time to good people. Look, I know you're hurting, but you can't let that girl get to you. That's what she wants. Chaz nodded and breathed. You're right. You're right. Okay, I'm calming down now. Where's Lisa? She's inside being pawed at by every man in the county. I heard she's like some movie star. Chaz smiled. And she looks good, that's for sure. But she's more than just a pretty face. Tyson watched his brother's face. That's the most he said about a woman in three years. It gave him hope that his older brother may once again find happiness. Well, I can't wait to meet her. Mom says the same thing. She and Dad will be along soon. Well, come on then, let's see if we can burrow through the crowd and get to her. New scene. We're neighbors, Lisa asked with a smile as her dance partner moved her about the floor. My land meets up to yours on the south side. You can't see the house from Maddie's place. Maybe I'll come by and take you for a little tour. That would be nice, she said. Yeah, maybe I'll do that real soon. I don't get by to see Maddie as often as I'd like. She's a wonderful little lady. Marcus smiled his most dashing smile. Isn't she, though? I barely know her, and yet I love her so much. I understand. Everyone feels the same way about Miss Maddie. So, you've been in Los Angeles, I hear. Yes, most recently. Where did you go to school? I got my bachelor's in business at UCLA. Great school. I didn't notice. I was too busy studying and working to pay attention to anything else. You know what they say about all work and no play? She laughed. I've heard. It's a good thing my name's not Jack. And there's no way anyone could call you a dull boy. I think you may be the most beautiful girl I've ever met. And here you are living right next door to me. He raised his eyes to the ceiling. Thank you, God. Lisa chuckled. Marcus Winstead is a very likable man, she thought. Not quite, not quite the stud that Chaz is, but extremely intelligent and sophisticated. She could see him stopping by in the evenings and chatting with her and Maddie. He would be very entertaining. 
new scene. By the time Chaz re-entered the building, the music and dancing were well underway. When he finally spotted Lisa on the dance floor, he shook his head. This evening just keeps getting worse and worse, he mumbled. That have anything to do with that little tease, Evan asked as he joined him. Chaz eyed his friend. So she do a number on you too? I asked her out. She said yes. And then she let me know she was only trying to make you jealous. So I let her know just where she stood with you and with me, which really pissed her off. I took her home. Apparently, she told her brother I tried to take advantage of her because a few hours later, Marcus was knocking on my door, threatening to blow my head off if I ever touch his little sister again. I promised him he would never have to worry about that. Chaz shook his head. I'm amazed that one little girl can cause so much trouble. Evan nodded, nodded toward Lisa. And now Marcus has your girl out on the dance floor. Chaz shuffled his feet uncomfortably. She's not my girl. Evan grinned. Well, I have confidence in you. The music ended and Chaz watched as Marcus obviously tried to get Lisa to accompany him to the refreshment tables. He was relieved to see Lisa gesture his way and break away from Marcus. Finally, he was going to be able to dance with her, to touch her again, to put his arms around her. Why did it seem to be so vital that he do that? Chaz's eyes never left hers as she started his way when another man approached her, usurping her attention. The entire room quieted making Chaz actually take notice of the man who had approached. Joe. Chaz thought about hurrying forward to help with the introductions, but obviously none were needed. They each knew who the other was. The entire crowd knew. He saw Lisa's mouth curve into a smile. He saw Joe nod and reach up to touch Lisa's hair, then brush her cheek softly. Then Lisa fell forward and was crushed in a huge bear hug, and the place exploded in applause. Chaz did move forward then. When he got to Lisa's side, she slipped her hand in his. Complete and utter relief rushed through him, and he squeezed her hand. I can't believe how beautiful you are, Joe was saying. She's got the look of you, Joe, Chaz added as the music started up. Come on, let's go somewhere you can talk. They found a room just off the kitchen. Chaz says you're planning on staying for a while. Yes, I am. What were you doing before you came here? Lisa's eyes met Chaz's. Actually, I was vice president of Golden Hotels. Joe's eyebrows shot up, but no longer. No longer, I quit. It seemed my whole life was a lie, and I had to do something drastic. She shrugged. I guess giving up a $300,000 a year job plus bonus is drastic. Joe smiled at her with the pride of a father. Money isn't the most important thing. You have to love what you do, and if you were living a lie, then it sounds like you did the right thing. I know I don't have the right to say this, but I'm proud of you. Lisa's eyes filled with tears. You have every right to say anything to me. You're my father. When Joe teared up as well, Chaz decided to vacate the premises. I'll, uh, I'll leave you two for a while to do some catching up. No, no, don't leave, Chaz, Joe said. We'll be in here all night if we did that. Tonight, let's have fun. Let's dance and let Lisa meet everyone else and have fun. And Lisa and I will find time this week to get together and get to know each other. He turned toward Lisa. Does that sound okay with you? She smiled, the most beautiful smile Chaz had ever seen. That sounds wonderful, she uttered softly. Chaz, Joe said as they started for the door. Does Lisa know about the rest of her family? The rest of my family? No, she doesn't know, Chaz said, smiling at her. I haven't had time to cover that with her. The rest of the family? Joe cleared his throat. Well, let me begin by saying that when your mother left me, I was devastated. I spent years trying to find you. He stopped and looked into her eyes. I finally had to try to have some kind of life for myself. Well, of course you did, she said, gently touching his arm. He looked down at her fingers on his arm and covered them with his hand. You're a sweet girl, Lisa. But what I'm trying to say is, well, I finally did get married to a wonderful girl named Shirley, and then we had a daughter. Lisa drew in her breath, her eyes wide. You're saying I have a sister? Oh, my goodness. This is wonderful. Joe laughed out loud. I was hoping you would react like that. Yes, you have a sister. Her name is Megan. She's 18. She just came home from her first year at Georgia. Lisa looked from Joe to Chaz and back to Joe. 
I have a baby sister. Is she here? When do I get to meet her? Well, actually, Shirley and Megan should be here by now. They let me come over alone to meet you, saying they would come a little later. Megan was very excited and very nervous about meeting you. Lisa frowned. Nervous? I hope she doesn't see me as someone trying to steal away her dad. No, it's not like that at all. Shirley and Megan have been right there, standing by me all these years while I've tried to find you. As a matter of fact, I remember one Father's Day when Megan was little, I guess about eight or so. She gave me a card saying she wished she could give me my other little girl as a gift. Lisa shook her head slowly. That is so sweet and amazingly insightful for one so young. Well, she's a very smart young lady. Lisa cast her eyes down briefly before she answered. I can't wait to meet her. Taking a deep breath, she leaped her arm in Joe's as Chaz brought up the rear. New scene. Lisa stood near the wall, yawning, while teenage boys climbed ladders and pulled streamers down from the ceiling. The dance had been over almost an hour now, but Maddie and Chaz were on the cleanup committee. It had given Lisa time to speak, speak more to her father and sister and stepmother. She marveled at being able to think she was not alone in the world anymore. Not only had she found her grandmother, but she'd found an entire family. She had a father, a stepmother, who was the antithesis of what word of what that word usually conjures and a baby sister who looked at her like she was a rock star they all of them were like something out of a storybook kind and good-hearted warm and loving Chaz had told her joe was a good man and he'd been right shirley was so sweet and made lisa feel completely comfortable and megan acted as if they'd been best friends who'd merely been away from each other for a while Lisa marveled at the fact that she and Megan looked so much alike, even though Megan was about an inch taller than Lisa and her hair was straight and cut to just below her shoulders. It was still deep red, just like Lisa's. They talked and talked, trying to catch up on a lifetime in just a few minutes, and finally they pulled themselves away, but Lisa couldn't wait to see them again. Lisa looked around to see if there was anything she could do to help with taking down the decorations. She tried to go in and help clean up the kitchen, but had been shooed out. She moseyed over to where an industrial-sized dust mop leaned against the wall. Taking it between her hands, she leaned on it and smiled, thinking about how kind everyone had been to her. What was really so surprising was how accepting everyone had been. It's like, Lisa marveled, she was a member of the community who'd been away for a while, and now she was back. That's simple. She met Chaz's parents and immediately had a better picture of the man who'd been playing on her mind like some tune you can't get rid of. What a great family. His mother was very soft-spoken and her eyes sparkled when she looked at her husband. Chaz's father was a large, tough-looking man, but when he spoke, she could tell he was just a big teddy bear. Chaz's younger brother, Tyson, was a cutie pie, Lisa thought. He looked about the same size as Chaz, but his hair was darker. A deputy sheriff, he'd been on duty and Lisa noticed the effect of the uniform wasn't lost on the ladies attending the dance. Near the end of the event, Lisa had bid goodbye to a string of men, most of whom had offered her an outing of some sort. She had accepted several invitations. Sighing, she realized she'd better learn real quick to say no, or she'd be going out every day and every night. Smiling at the antics of the boys who had begun to throw wads of streamers at each other, Lisa turned her head to see Chaz making his way toward her, a smoldering look in his dark eyes. Without a word, he took the mop from her, leaned it back against the wall, took her by the hand and pulled her down a corridor. Where are you going? She asked. I haven't been able to talk to you or dance with you or barely get to speak with you all night, he said, as he came to a halt about halfway down the hallway. He opened a door with a golden five on it and tugged her into the room. Glancing around, she realized they were in a small classroom Noting the Bible pictures on a small bulletin board, she realized it must be a children's Sunday school classroom. Chaz closed the door to the classroom and Lisa looked up at him expectantly. I have waited patiently all week to get you to this dance, and I waited all night to get a dance with you. Lisa smiled. You feeling left out? Yes, but I was polite, wasn't I? I didn't complain, not one bit, did I? No, you were a very good boy. Abruptly, he pulled her close against his body. I am nothing like a good boy, he said huskily, and lowered his head to kiss her.
She had expected him to hum a tune and have a private dance with her, but this was even better. She raised her mouth for the kiss. She thought brief briefly about being coy and telling him that she'd not given him permission to take advantage of her. And just because he'd kissed her twice now doesn't mean she'd let him kiss her again, but who was she fooling? Was it only this morning that he'd set her on the table in Grams's kitchen and kissed her? He'd been so gentle, so sweet, and yet so manly, and she hadn't been able to get it out of her mind. He'd stirred something in her, and if Maddie hadn't come back when she did, who knew what his kiss may have led to? Chaz was definitely very masculine, and his maleness got to her. No man had ever had that kind of effect on her. With Glenn, being physical with him had almost been a chore. With Chaz, a man she'd known less than a week, she already craved being close to him. All evening she'd been hoping that somehow he would find a way to be alone with her tonight, and she was glad he didn't disappoint her. Somehow she knew he wouldn't, being the man he was. She gave herself up to the moment. His slow, tender kiss was wreaking havoc with her system, causing a burning in the pit of her stomach. Her heart beat so fast she thought it would explode out of her chest, and her entire body yearned to be closer to him, if that were possible. When he pulled away for a moment, she almost winced with the pain of it. He raised his head and looked into her eyes. She swayed and moaned. Yeah, Red, me too, he said softly and moved in for another kiss. I can't seem to get enough, he whispered, his voice rough. What in the world am I going to do? Lisa looked up at him. I, I don't know what to say. No man has ever made me feel like this. I mean, Glenn always told me I was hot, but he was always trying to get me to have sex with him like in weird places, like on my desk or in a bathroom at the theater, kinky stuff like that. But I got the feeling anyone would have done in a pinch. But you, you make me feel like... She stopped and shook her head. How do you feel, Lisa? Well, the other day when you first kissed me, you said it was to show me that I'm still desirable. But you make me feel more than just desired because any gay guy on the street can make me feel desired. I mean, it feels like you actually care about me, that you don't desire just anyone, you desire me. Glenn gave me up readily enough for a woman in her 40s, and you make me feel special and that makes me feel like I want to give you everything. His heart pounded in his chest. He had her permission. Still, he knew he shouldn't do it. He'd only known her for a few days, yet she already felt like his property. He should stop. He should take her back to Maddie and come calling later when he was able to get a grip on himself. But even as the thoughts of restraint raced through his mind, his mouth took hers in a fierce kiss. The blood pounded in his ears, keeping him from thinking logically. Indeed, he was thinking extremely illogically, because the things he was thinking should not be thought here, not in this Sunday school classroom, not at all outside the bonds of matrimony. What pried them apart was the sound of voices in the corridor outside the classroom. I don't see them now, Miss Maddie, but I was just so sure they'd come down this way. Chaz and Lisa froze, gazing at each other breathlessly. Chaz held a finger to his lips, grateful that the doors had no windows in them. She smiled provocatively at him as his rough fingers tried to smooth her hair. Wait until they leave and we'll sneak out, he whispered. She giggled. I feel like I'm 16 again. He grinned back at her. If you did this with a 16-year-old boy, I'm sure you made his year for him. She shook her head. No boys ever walked away from me and considered themselves lucky, although there were a few who swore they'd been. He chuckled and put his arm around her and kissed the tip of her nose. I don't understand the power you seem to have over me, he whispered. I swear I don't go around kissing every beautiful woman that comes my way. But you, Red, he stopped and shook his head. You are something else. You are special, Lisa. I guess I should apologize for even thinking about compromising you. She smiled. Don't you dare. And that is the end of chapter six.